You're listening to Parents You've Got This, the expert guide to parenthood. The complete guide to pregnancy, birth, baby and parenthood. Contraceptives is a really big topic. Since the first contraceptive pill in the 1950s, they have continued to evolve. And today we welcome back into the podcast chair our obstetrician and gynecologist expert, Dr. Peter Jersevic, to talk about all the different options and what might be right for you at different stages of your journey. Dr. Peter is an obstetrician and gynaecologist expert with over 28 years of expertise in high-risk pregnancies, as well as being one of the Australian pioneers of the maternally assisted caesarean. Thanks, PJ, for joining us back in the chair today to talk all things contraceptives. It's a big topic. There's so many different types, natural and medical contraceptives. Um, We might just start out, you know, with a basic question of what are contraceptives? Sure. So contraceptives are a way of essentially preventing a pregnancy where a pregnancy is not wanted. Uh, And it's not necessarily limited to just the female in terms of her responsibility. It's a couple-based, male factor-based responsibility. And so there are different options accordingly for each person. So, Pete, what are some of those options that are available? Sure. I think it's fair to say that uh, most people, men and women, but women particularly, are are aware of all of the options. But loosely based, we can talk about barrier-based contraceptives. Uh, We can actually talk about natural-based contraceptives. Uh, We can talk about hormonally based contraceptives and then we can talk about ways of, you know, permanently providing sort of a a, a way of preventing a pregnancy. So if we look at each of those options as examples, you know, barriers would be condoms and the natural ones would be just monitoring your rhythm of your cycle and when you know you would be or not be most fertile. Contraceptive pills, which we are familiar with, which are tablets of estrogen and progesterone to try to help to prevent ovulation and the ability of a sperm and an egg to meet. Uh, We then have uh, things that we can insert into the uterus, and people are familiar with the term IUD. And then, of course, for those couples at the end of their reproductive journey, not wanting any children, we can do vasectomies for the male and and tubal ligation for the female. So you mentioned, um, Dr Peter, quite a few different contraceptive methods there. If we go into these in a little bit more detail, starting out perhaps with the natural forms of contraceptive, how reliable are things like um, breastfeeding, permanently um, to stop um, falling pregnant. Sure. So if we look at the different natural options, uh, these are referring to rhythm-based approaches where you're aware of your cycle rhythm. And for a woman who has a regular, consistent 28-day cycle with a reasonable presumption of ovulation around day 14, the middle of their cycle, then in those days leading into that and the days thereafter, that would be your most fertile window. So not being sexually active then and or using another form of contraception, for example, a condom as a barrier, would or should help to reduce a conception with a high degree of efficacy. There are some women who monitor their temperature and there is an increase in your basal body temperature when you ovulate and therefore once you see your temperature rise, you would know to avoid um, intercourse and or again use a condom. And there are other women who will be monitoring their mucus, what we call the spin bar K. And when we see changes in that mucus, in your cervical mucus, that would be another indication that you're probably ovulated. And so they would be natural ways of approaching and very effective tools and highly efficacious, made easier for women who've got regular cycles. For the breastfeeding question, there is a reasonable expectation if you breastfeed, certainly in the first few months, you breastfeed exclusively, and preferably you're breastfeeding every three hours no more than four hours apart between feeds. And that includes through the night, so you're not stretching your little one out. There is a degree of reliability in reducing the likelihood of ovulation and falling pregnant. But as with the constraints of life and wanting your little one to sleep through and getting your own personal rest, maybe substituting some formula into some feeds, there is a chance that you can lose some of that efficacy on the hormonal effects on your body. And it just takes one little surge from your ovaries and an egg and you are, dare I say, back in the game. So we would, as a general rule nowadays, not necessarily advocate as that being the most effective form of contraception. We're not getting pregnant again for a myriad of reasons is important. What about withdrawal, Pete? How effective is that? So the issue with withdrawal is that you can sometimes have a little bit of semen prior to ejaculation proper, and there can be a lot of sperm in a sample. So the average male can have on a, in, a, in a reliable, good quality ejaculate, 20 million sperm per mil. Okay, wow. so, and there are some men who can have 80 million sperm per mil. Wow. So even if there is only a half a mil or a quarter of a mil of 
of semen just prior to ejaculation. That can be a lot of sperm and it just takes one to meet the target audience at the other end, the egg, and you've got a conception. So we wouldn't say to you that that is reliable contraception, but it will certainly be better than nothing. You know, if you if you are doing that, for some couples that can be effective, but we wouldn't advocate that as being reliable. Yeah. yeah. So if we talk medical interventions now, say that you have just had a baby, how soon would you need to get on something like, say, the mini pill? Yeah. So there are a lot of women who'll be uh, breastfeeding and breastfeeding well and will come in at their six-week checkup after the birth of the baby, whether that's a vaginal birth or a caesarean, and they've had no evidence of menstruation. And so there is a presumption that their ovulatory system is still quite quiescent, so they're not ovulating. But unfortunately, it's unpredictable as to when you're going to get that first surge to stimulate the ovary to ovulate. So that could be for some women, and I've seen it, they come in at the six-week check, they've menstruated. Wow. So in essence, mm-hmm. they are now fertile again. Mm-hmm. And there are other women who can breastfeed for many months, six plus or more, and probably reliably not get pregnant, not that we're relying on the breastfeeding for that. So what it means is by the six-week check, we would be advocating for any woman to use some method of contraception by whatever means that will be. Yeah. yeah. What about the other um, chemical um, contraceptives like IEDs, the Marina, things like that. When are they appropriate? Sure. So, contraceptive pills, uh, estrogen and progesterone based, or pure progesterone based, what we refer to as the mini pill, and there are many different formulations, the majority of which have a standard type of estrogen in them, and then variations of progesterone. And the new generation medications have got what we call new generation, fourth generation progesterones with the implication being that the the newer the drug, the newer the progesterone formulation, the better the side effect profile. Because whenever you give something to a woman, there is a chance that their body may react to it. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the pure progesterone-based formulations, which are particularly useful for a myriad of reasons, but particularly for breastfeeding, because you can't use estrogen when you're breastfeeding. But if you wish to take a tablet, the progesterone mini pill is useful. We then have hormone insertables. So we have the implanon rod, which can be placed in your arm. And for women, that might be efficacious because when that's inserted, releasing progesterone, it's there for three years. So there's no tablet taking. There's no constancy of purchasing tablets. There's no forgetting. It's just there permanently. And then we have the uh, IUDs, and we refer to them as the hormonal and non-hormonal ones. But for the hormonal ones, uh, the two on the, on the market, the Mirena and the Kylena, they have progesterone inserted into them and they're, av- they're able to be inserted. They last for up to five years. And they can provide some menstrual benefits because of their effect on the local lining of the uterus, but also contraception. But again, like any hormonal agent, there is the capacity for some women to get some side effects from these from these things. And what about the more permanent forms um, of contraceptive? What do you recommend there? Sure. So uh, I, I always ask the question, um, and I ask it with sincerity to any woman couple when they're wanting to have permanent contraception, um, and that's... For the majority who've had children and have literally just don't want to have any more children. But I've actually had some women who've come to see me and said, I just don't want to be a mother ever and I want some certainty that I won't ever fall pregnant and I want permanent contraception. And with informed consent, that choice can be made. But that would be obviously a minority group. So if we talk about the majority, so a woman who might have had three children coming into her late 30s and just wants the certainty of contraception, doesn't want the as she sees it, the imposition of tablet taking, risk of hormone side effects or whatever. I usually just ask three questions and I just go, are you certain you don't want any more children? Like you, you, you're absolutely finished. You've got your two or your three and you're done. Um, if God forbid something happened to one of your children, you know, we, we should pray that will never be the case, but would you ever replace a child? Not that you can replace a child, but you would want to have another child as a result. And also just, you know, in that unfortunate situation where your relationship doesn't go the way you hoped and then there's someone else new in your life and you choose to have another baby with that person. The inference is, are you absolutely sure you do not want to have, and I'm referring to the female, another baby in your body, okay? And if you can make that decision and as a father make the decision you don't want to father any more children, then it's the offering of a vasectomy for the male where the vas deferens is, is, is cut and tied or for a woman having her tubes cut or tied or removed and for women who are having a cesarean section for example third baby want to have their sterility at the time of the procedure that's just done on the spot as an additional couple of minutes to the procedure and for other situations it would be a keyhole operation where either some clips or 
um, coagulation, stitches, etc. applied, and then the tubes are blocked so the sperm and the egg can't meet. Can you reverse that? Everything is reversible, but I always remind people it's reversible with some difficulty. Mm. It's reversible without a guarantee of the efficacy of the reversal with quite a large amount of cost and with a chance that if that fails, it would be RIVF that would be required. Hence the reason why it's really important when you're having permanent contraception to be certain of the decision. So for people who are wondering, you know, what might be the best contraceptive option for them, do you suggest that they go and talk to their GP or do they come and see their gynaecologist or how do they know who to talk to at the different stages? Because it changes, doesn't it? You know, you're on contraceptives before you want to have a baby, then all of a sudden you do and then you don't want to have another one too quick and Mm -hmm. then, you know, it keeps evolving as you go along. Sure. So outside of the prescription of medication, which a doctor does, um, seeing a family planning clinic uh, and trained counsellors, nurses who can guide you through the options, your GP absolutely would be very, very aware of all of these things. And of course, obviously, as a gynaecologist, I'm very familiar with all the options. So you can choose between. Uh, For me, the majority of the contraception that I'm seeing is for uh, often the women coming in for their six-week post-delivery check. And we're talking about requirements for contraception for a whole myriad of reasons. Uh, For those who've had a Caesar there's a requirement of time for the uterus to heal before they can safely fall pregnant. So they must be careful, must. Like that's a medical necessity. And then, of course, women who are coming in after having had a child or after several children and they need body recovery time, you know, time to bond with their child, time to space their family planning if that was whatever it was, what their eventual plan was. And so you're just going through all the options and you get a sense of the woman in front of you, what their preferences are what their risks might be to certain options um and 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 dare i say for for women and you know we talked about natural options but condoms are terrific you know if you don't have an issue with wearing a condom uh they're very very effective and there's no drugs there's no tablets there's no side effects they're they're great if if you're inclined to use one and are you required to have any tests and scans before starting contraceptives or is it just a matter of chatting to your GP or your gynaecologist and working out what's right for you? Sure. I say as a broad-reaching answer, no. Um, there will be always situations where something will come up in the consultation where you might mention something that might require an investigation. And uh, for An example would be probably for young women, I'm referring to adolescents uh, who are beginning their sexual journey and needing a contraceptive occasionally needing contraceptives for a therapeutic basis so you know young women with menstrual disorders menstrual pain etc we're using it therapeutically to help them in that situation particularly if they're sexually active and outside of how careful they've been you'd be talking about stis and 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 you know sort of swabs and that sort of stuff Fantastic, Pete. Thank you so much for sharing so many different contraceptive options that there are for all of us um, with everybody listening today. You've been listening to the Expert Guide to Parenthood podcast and never forget parents, you've you've got got this. this. Join a Parents You've Got This masterclass today to be prepared, excited and educated for pregnancy, birth, baby and parenthood. Visit www.parentsyou'vegotthis.com.au and sign up for a masterclass today.